Thank you, Emily and Matt. I, I trust you've picked up the theme of this morning. I was going to show you in a moment why that passage, I believe, does speak about, about worry. How many of you recognize that song that we just... Did any of you recognize the song we just sang? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. How many of you knew that? Some of you did. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about that song. It's a very old song, actually. It's not a new one. But to actually, think, speaking of songs, before I do, I'm just going to ask Faye if she'd come and say something about new songs that are about to be released and uh, about a worship evening next week. We want you all to know about so you can join in. Can we borrow a microphone there? Is that okay, Marcus? This is Faye, and she's going to tell you all about these new songs. Thank you, Faye. Hello. Can you all hear me? Is that, is that all working? If not, I'll just shout. Um, yeah, um, so I've been up here a few weeks now, so this is probably your my, marginally fed up on my face, but we've got a worship album coming out in its entirety after a few different singles coming out this coming Friday, so the 24th. Yeah, it's really exciting. On the 24th of November, um, we had uh, our second single, um, Forever in a Day, come out last Friday. Hopefully you all saw it. Um, so, yeah, it's, we'd really hope that you'd be excited for it. It will be available on all streaming services. It's a digital release, so Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, wherever you like to get your songs. Um, all of the information is going to be on the King's Norwich website. So if you go onto the website, it's... Um, forward slash KNW, so King's Norwich Worship. So there'll be links on there um, and all of the information. Um, but we've also really excitingly got a worship evening on next Sunday, so on the 26th of November, around, I'm going to say 7 for a 7.30 start. That's usually the way we do things in the evening. But it's going to be a really great time for, you know, all of the new songs are going to be played. Um, so to not only worship God, but also to celebrate the amazing work of some of our creatives here. Um, so, yeah, we'd really love it if you could join us. Um, and, yes, please look out for the single. There'll be a pre-save link in the loop as well. So on Thursdays, that'll be coming straight to your email inboxes. So if you can pre-save on your streaming services, etc., and then when it comes out, play it lots, share it with your friends, because that helps it perform well on algorithms and just make sure it's, like, giving a CD to your friend, basically. Um, so, yeah, it's really exciting. We're really... Hope that you enjoy it. And um, yes, any questions, um, come and like flag me down at the end and I'll try my best to answer them. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. That's really, really, I don't want that one. No, you don't want that. no, you don't. That's <laughs> brilliant. Please do come next Sunday evening, 7 to 7.30 here. We're going to have a worship evening and the musicians from City Centre and City West will be playing. And uh, this, the album, This Is Our Worship. We'll be singing those songs and worshiping together. So do come along next Sunday evening. The song I just we sang earlier on, "Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus," it's a very old song actually. It's a, it was written. You might think, oh, it's a, it's a sort of a simple song for someone who's having a, a good time, and you know, hey, you don't know the problems that I'm going through. You don't know what I'm going through. Well, actually, that song was written by a dear lady Louisa Stead. Um, shortly after her husband had died tragically in a swimming accident, she was trying to save someone. And she was left to fend for her for, for young children and herself. And she wrote that song, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." That was way over 100 years ago she wrote it. And it's a wonderful expression of the kind of life that we can have in following Jesus, whatever the circumstances of our lives. And so coming to this passage that, we, that, that, that was read just a moment ago, um, I want to just try and show you how at the heart of this passage is that the way we do our lives, the way we walk through most days of our lives, and the way that worry so quickly comes and affects everything that we do. So James starts off, now listen, you who say today we'll go here or there and spend a year doing business and make money. He starts off with a little bit of a, now listen, now listen up. I want you, I, this is really important, and it is really important for us this morning. It, it, it comes across as though he's telling us off. But actually what he's doing, he's trying to tell us that the way that we often live our lives is just, it's, it, it's not appropriate for the kind of people we are. It's not a f appropriate for who we are now as Christians the, in the family of God with Jesus as our saviour, it's not appropriate to be living like this. It's unworthy of you, okay? Like a father sort of speaking to his children. Look, that's just not what we do in the family. That's not part of family life for us. 
So it's, I don't believe it's just about money and business. It's about the way that we conduct our whole lives. We all do it, don't we? We make plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to study. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to get this. I'm going to have that kind of career. I'm going to have that kind of... I'm going to meet this kind of a, a, a person, we, we, and I'm going, to, I'm going to have a family, I'm going to go here, there. We, we all do it all the time, don't we? We make plans for our lives. We do it almost instinctively. We're thinking ahead, planning our lives, okay? We try and control our lives. So what's the problem? Well, the first thing James says is, verse 14, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a while and vanishes. What's the problem? Life is uncertain. It's very uncertain. You know that's true. Life is very uncertain. It's fragile. The kind of creatures that we are, there's a lot of things that can just turn things around in a second. Illness. Accidents, tragedy. In a second, our lives can be totally thrown in a different direction. Our lives are fragile. And James, he, he doesn't mince his words about it. He says, your life can be shut, cut short as quickly as the morning sun dispels the mist. You can't control your lives. We all try and do it, making grandiose plans, planning the kind of future that we want. James is saying, you can't do that. He's trying to wake us up. Your life is fragile. Please be aware, your life is very fragile. Okay? It's a biblical theme. This, you know, through, through, the, uh, through Scripture, you, you find in, um, in Proverbs 27, don't boast about tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring forth. Don't boast, don't, 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 don't be self-reliant, trying to plan your own lives. But we do, we try so hard to control the circumstances around us, don't we? We work hard at it, we chase, we work, we, we overextend, we, we're on the treadmill, just trying to hold life together, trying to do it, keep going, keep going, got to make it work, got to make it work. We become anxious and worried people. So that's the, the whole point of that first verse. James is saying, you can't control your life. It's very fragile. And the second point, the second problem, it's uncertain, and it results in worry. Because we try to control our lives. We try the what-ifs of life. We try and cover all the what-ifs. We try very, very hard. We try to make things happen, to hold things together, don't we? We all, we all do it. And the, the, the ironic thing is, if things work out well with our plans, we take great pride in it, don't we? But if things don't work out, we worry about them. So we oscillate between, aren't I doing well? And life seems to be just running away from me. I don't know what to do. And so James is saying, this is not the way to live. But the third thing is, it's, it's actually arrogant. Doing it your way, just plowing into every day, doing things your way. That's, that, that's as we heard just a moment ago, that's where, it all be, where everything started to go wrong in Eden. In the Garden of Eden, look, no, look, I, I'm not, not going to, no, 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 I, I know better, I know better, I know better. That's where the problems began. And so James is touching on a major problem in, in our lives and in society, everyone trying to, 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 to make things happen, living life their way, and it, it, it leads to this worry that we heard of a moment ago. Okay, now let's go a little bit further. So what is the solution? And this, this verse really surprised me. I, I'd not seen this before. Look at verse, verse 15. Instead... You ought to say, now, I thought it said, if God wills it, God willing, you know that, Deo Valente in the Latin, people used to put DV on their letters or say, yes, I'm going to do this, that, and the other, DV, 
Deo Valente. Is that right? My Latin is rubbish, but it's something like that. God willing. Is that what he's saying, that we should say God willing all the time? Well, actually, that's not what it says. Because, in fact, I'm reading a few books about this, that it was God willing was sort of a, a common phrase beyond Christianity in those days. Most people were not atheists or agnostics. They believed in some sort of God, the gods, you know. And, and so that there was this sort of superstitious God willing, you know, that wasn't just reserved for, for Christians. It was a common saying. But that's not what he says. He doesn't say God willing. He says instead you, instead you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will. He doesn't say God, the Lord's will. Do you see that? He, he brings in a different word to make a, a fresh point. The Lord. Who's the Lord? Well, let's have a little look. It's here in um, uh, earlier on, chapter 1 and verse 1. He starts off with it. James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's speaking about the Lord Jesus. And we get it again in chapter 2 and verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. He's speaking about Jesus. And he's speaking about Jesus as Lord. Did you get it? Lord. What, what, what does Lord mean? Well, it was a common saying in, Rome, in, in those days, Caesar is Lord. And so Christians, they made it their sort of, uh, their, their phrase, no, no, not, it's not Caesar is Lord, Jesus is Lord. He's the one with authority over my life. He's the one that I live for. He's the one that I commit my life to. Do you see the difference? It doesn't say God willing, it says the Lord willing. Look, it, it's about the sovereignty of Jesus in their lives. Do you see that? And that's what he's trying to say here. He wants the the sovereignty, the, the, the wonderful reign of Jesus to be in their everyday planning. He wants them to be acknowledging their Savior. When you were baptized, I'm looking over here because of the tank under there, and if, when you're baptized, you go down in the water, you're dying to yourself, and you're, right, you're raving, raised up a new person in Christ. You belong to him now. You were bought with a price. Do you see the difference? So instead of going through the day, making your plan, just plowing on, doing things your way, what he's saying is, please, 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 that'll only lead to worry. Don't, don't live life like that. There's another way you can live your life. The Lord. Lord, Lord what do you want for me today? Lord, what, what do you want for my future? Do you see? That's what he's, that's what he's saying here. Which means, but that's not the only thing I saw in that verse. I, I, I know, maybe I'm a bit slow, but I'd never. It doesn't just say, if it's the Lord's will, we'll do this or that. It doesn't say that, does it? It says, if it's the Lord's will, we will live. Oh, if it's the Lord's will, we'll live. What's he saying there? What he's saying is, everything about your life, everything, the next breath you take, it's all in his hands if you belong to him. If you've given your life to the Lord Jesus, if you have become a Christ one, if you've been baptized and given your life to Christ, your life is his. It's all, it's all grace. If it's the Lord's will, you'll live. Isn't that lovely? It's, my life's in your, in your hands. What a, what a wonderful thing to be able to say. If it's the Lord's will, you'll live. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm reading too much into that. I don't, I don't think so. But if you're, a, if you're a Christian, everything about your life is in his hands. Do you get it? Isn't that what a what a better way to, to go into tomorrow. I mean, there's probably a million things you could worry about tomorrow. Don't count them. But there's probably a long list of things that you... I'm sure, I, I know, there's, there's, lots, there's things that, you, that many of you are worrying about right now. You're worrying about them. What a way to be able to go into a new day. Lord, what's, look, it's, it's all of grace. Lord, 
<laughs> my whole life, my life is, is it's all in your hands. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Lord, I give it to you. Especially when I'm facing big things like the dear lady who wrote that song. Especially when it's, it's looking bleak and wobbly and I, you, you can't control it anyway. So stop trying. Lord, it's yours. I trust you. Do you see the difference? And yet even as Christians, we often, what's that, you know, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Some of you know that one. All because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. Lord, it's yours. You see, so I, it really leapt out at me. If it's the Lord's will, we'll live and we'll do this and we'll do that. Lord, it's all, all, all yours. James is wanting these dear people and you and me to know the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. Our finances, how we use our resources, how we use our time, our relationships. He wants the whole, all of you to be in his hands. What a wonderful, wonderful way to be able to live life. Isn't it beautiful? And, it, you know, it's, it's not just about, the, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's something, you know, there's probably some surprises there. When you, when you have that approach to your life, Lord, it's all yours. You might find the Lord leading you in unusual ways. When you, when you start a day like that, Lord, it's all yours, I'm yours. Of course, there are things you, ha- you need to be doing. But I wouldn't be too surprised if you start to walk into your days like with that attitude. The Lord will be directing you with a, a kind word here, an encouragement there. Something special there because you're, you're, you're in his hands. You're under his hand. Do you see? There's something very, very beautiful. Dear friends, the solution to our worried, stress-filled lives is to place it all in the, under the hands of, in the hands of the Lord Jesus, to put your life under the lordship of Jesus. You don't need me to tell you this. The stress in the culture around us, the worries in the culture around us. You don't have to be like that. In fact, it's a moment for us as Christians to live differently. To live differently. You remember that old saying, I might not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Yeah? That, this is what, how we can begin to live. To, to, to live our lives. God is the one. Your, your Father is the one who sustains you and keeps you. He's the one who, will, who wants to order your steps, to provide for you. I like Matthias, one writer, he puts it like this. The biblical worldview is that we receive another day neither by natural necessity nor by mechanical law, but by, nor by right, nor by the courtesy of nature, but only by the covenant mercies of our God. This knowledge helps to dispel self-sufficiency, replacing it with the freedom to rely on God's faithful generosity. James is leading us into a life of grace reliance. Dear, dear church family, please take, take note of these words. Now listen, 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 please listen. Don't go into tomorrow saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then I'm, don't, 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 don't do that. Because you can't control tomorrow. Go into tomorrow with a different attitude. It says, Lord, all I have is yours because I am yours. I entrust my life to you. I bring my choices to you. I want to live under your wonderful, wonderful care and sovereignty. Does that sound good? And you can trust him. In case you're wondering, listen to this. Wonderful words here from Isaiah. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Have no compassion on the child that she has born. Though she may forget, 
I will not forget you. You see, I've engraved you on the palms of my hand. Isn't that beautiful? That was written hundreds of years before Jesus went to the cross for you. It's the heart of God. <laughs> the prophetically, prophetic words there. A, a, a nursing mother, well, very, very unlikely that a mother will, will forget a nursing child. But even if she did, though she may forget, I won't forget you. You see, I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. Isn't that beautiful? Folks, this, 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 is, this is who you are. If you've given your life to Christ, this is who you are now. You don't have to try to control things and be full of stress and worry. You can bring every day to the Lord everything going on in your life under the Lordship of Jesus. You can do that. It tells us in Luke chapter 12, Jesus saying, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Not one of them is forgotten. Why, even the hairs on your head are all numbered. It's harder with some of us than others, but there we go. But fear not, because you are of more value than many sparrows. You were bought with a price. You belong to him. And I feel this morning the Lord wants to, to speak very practically to a number of us here today. And for some of us, I think there's probably a case that you, you've been just doing your own thing for too long. And it's time for you to be saying, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I want to bring it all to you. Lord, I've been doing my own thing. I want to bring it to you. Your wonderful lordship. Others of you, there's, there's some real big worries and cares going on. And the Lord wants to minister, minister, minister to you. He wants to come and, and demonstrate his loving kindness, his care for you. You don't need to be like Mr. Worry in a worried culture. You can live differently, knowing that your heavenly Father cares about you. I'm going to ask musicians to come up now, and I'd, I'd love us to give some time to this, so just some, some heart connection with, with the Lord, some time just to allow the Holy Spirit to come and work in your heart and life. If you need to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus, his lordship over every area. Maybe you've been doing it your way and you, you've got yourself in a bit of a pickle. Well, this morning is an opportunity to say, Lord, Lord I, I'm sorry. I come to you. I, 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 lay it before, I lay my life before you. For others of you, worry is just really causing you lots of grief in your heart and life. And you, you need the Lord to minister you to this morning. You need, it's become such a pattern for you. Worry. This morning, you need the Holy Spirit to come and minister the kindness of God. You need that this morning. We're going to worship. We're going to sing a, we're going to sing a song that's um, it's, it, it's kind of fairly old. I hope you know it. And uh, it's, it's into your hands is the first line, okay? Into your hands. I commit again. And we're going to sing this, and I want you to make this a prayer. And I want you to do business with the Lord this morning. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you, if you don't know what it means to belong to him, you can do that this morning. You can do that this morning. You can come to, in fact, at the end of the meeting, the prayer room will be open. We'd love to talk with you and pray with you. You can give your life to Jesus this morning. If you are a Christian, you, you can... You can do business with the Lord this morning. He's here, and he wants to minister to you. Have we got the words up there? Can we put the words up there? We've got no music. We, and this is a, a beautiful song. Into your hands I commit again. All the night, Lord, here I am. I'm yours. And I, I want to invite you, please, please, allow the Lord to be working deeply. Bring you back under his lordship. Minister to you where there's worry and anxiety.
Allow the Lord to speak to you this morning. Are you ready for this? In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a bit more personal. If, before we come to sing this, if, if you feel the Lord speaking to you about some of these things this morning, would you just stand? I want to pray for you before we sing this song. God's speaking to you about who's in control of your life, perhaps issues of worry and care. Maybe you need the Lord's touch this morning. Just, just stand now before we start to, 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 to worship. Let's, please, just go for it. Don't be afraid. It's, it's kind of a Lord, me. Lord, help. Lord, I give myself totally back to you. Just may take a stand anywhere you are. Come, Holy Spirit, come and please, precious Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you for your deep, loving care for us this morning. Oh, beautiful. Let's, let's all stand now. Let's all make our stand. You ready for this one? Into your hands I commit again. All I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your hand, and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. Let's sing that first verse again. Prayer to the Lord. Into your hands. I commit again with all I am for you, Lord. You hold my life in the palm of your hands, and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, reason that I think with all my hands. Let's have the next, next verse. What's the next? Just as we're here standing, keep that refrain going. If you, you just need the Lord. You need a touch from the Lord. There's worry. There's anxiety. I just want to encourage you. Lift your hands to the Lord. Just, just lift your hands to Him. It was others' eyes are closed. Just raise your hands to the Lord. Lord, I need you. 
I'm looking in your direction. Lord, I'm very frail, but you're very mighty. Lord, you're, a, you're my father. You're in control. Lord, I love you and I, I'm here for you and I, I need a touch from you this morning, Lord. Come please, Holy Spirit, and minister to me. Lord, minister to me this morning. Oh, lift your hands to the Lord. Oh, Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. I will worship. Is that okay? I I will worship. Here we go. I will worship you. I will worship. I will worship. I will worship. Let's sing that refrain again. I will worship. I will worship. Yes, Lord, we worship you. I will worship. 